Hey guys, we made it. Hi, K pop. Hi, I'm here with Matt, aka Hexapus. Am I, am I saying that correctly? Yeah, yeah. Okay, perfectly. Hi, hello. Nice to meet you. Uh, <laughs> good, take a minute. Cause I, oh, you're welcome. I will have you gladly on any time. Uh, give it a second because sometimes StreamYard has been doing weird stuff where it'll post like one message and then stop for a second and then go do wildy wild things okay. but let's say let's say hi to the chat real quick and then we'll come back to you we got glenn the um, bestest mod ever and the greatest farter in the uk <laughs> yes we got wonger what's up wonger we got hh what's up hh oh we got the beefaroni is in the house what's up beefaroni well yeah see so just jumped up a bunch oh hey figure what's up lisa hi lisa Hi, John. Okay, I'm trying to not miss people. I miss so. Well, let's do it again. Hey, Punch. What's up? Hi, Punch. So, hi. Okay. Okay, that's still loading. We're going to give that a second. So, hi, Matt. How are you? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I, I survived. I'm good. <laughs> I'm, I'm here with you. and We're having fun. And we're going to get into a bit about your art. So, if you, nobody really knows about you. Would you like to give them an introduction to who you are and what you do? Uh, yeah, my name is Matt Forsyth, uh, aka Hexbus Inc., and I create and draw the comic book Bound or manga Bound. Um, yeah, yeah, there you go. There you go. Oh, you, uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's it. That's all I do. <laughs> <laughs> that's all you do. That's all. Like, yeah, that's, that's my life. Uh, just, you just so released. Uh, Oh, um, what's that one? Hold on, let me make you big. Let me make you big. Eight. Oh, okay. So this is the manga form, and then you have individual issues for it as well? Yeah, right now we're just doing it just for patrons on Patreon. Oh, okay. Um, How nice. So they get each chapter. Get a sneaky peek of all um, the, the art in there. And uh, yeah, um, moving, moving along. Yes, it's lovely. Thank you. Um, yeah, that's all I do. I don't really have a whole lot of uh, <laughs> credentials. Uh, I've, I've done some random covers and okay, done, uh, cover for a band and stuff Ooh, like that. Oh, nice! And Very some cool. like, you know random design gigs, like board game stuff and board games. Like nice. That. But um, yeah, bound is just what what I do and what I intend to do for the foreseeable future yeah. when did you when did you start doing your age of the bound book what did that uh, come out originally we started, we started putting it out into the world in like 2009 2010 okay um, i so originally started just putting it on uh, deviant art back when that was like the oh, nice. uh, the thing to do <laughs> chosen yeah platform <laughs> yeah um and we we first printed it in 2013 but that was okay. a very primitive version. Like some of the pages are still in there and some of the pages are still oh, in this. Okay. But, uh, I redrew a lot of it. I redrew a lot of the first chapter. Because <laughs> after I got to, you know, chapter two, chapter three, um, my art had improved quite a bit. So I felt like I needed to go back through and make that initial chapter a little bit more appealing to the eye yeah it's i really like your art style it reminds me a lot of like the 80s 90s anime like we talked about this before at the the con oh shit hey phil phil uh, phil was i was running around cap city with phil and i went to go say bye to phil and i ran back in to go buy my books from dave brown and that's how i ran into you because you were his booth partner you were oh, nice. boothing next to him but uh <laughs> hey yeah uh, so i'm glad i ran back in there because i would have missed all your stuff yeah. um and i'm very excited because i really enjoy your art so are you you do all your panels traditionally and then turn them digitally or do you do them digitally first I used to do them all traditionally. I used to start with non-photo blue pencil, like coal erase, um, okay. and then pencil them and then ink them. But, uh, you know, uh, ink was not, and I was never very confident with ink, especially at first. So okay. I would do a lot of digital editing. And eventually I just switched over completely to digital from 
Oh, chapter chapter five, I think, is a hundred percent digital. Interesting. Because when you're one through four of like a mix. Okay, because when you're going through it, you can it looks like it's still done traditionally, which is very neat. Like it's got yeah. the grays and the blacks. It yeah. looks like the inks. And I really like how like some of it's just like, oh wait, hold on, let me get real quick so I can do this. There we go. I like I like how you have like the black and white ink work, like yeah, like it's yeah. black and white, like mm -hmm. solid like that. But then you also have these lovely gray tones. Um, that are let me find a good page to show you guys that are nice and it looks totally like just like your ink washing. Let me see, find a good one. Cool stuff in here. There's a lot of gore, cool shit in here. <laughs> All the good stuff that I love. Okay, let me find a page. Heck? Okay, so like here. Like when you see the grays, oh yeah, like mm -hmm. you really hit the gray levels and get the depths with the black, but the grays yeah. are so soft. It's lovely. Oh, thank you. I I really enjoy that. And that's one of the things that drew me to your table. Like when I was like chilling next to Dave, but uh, yeah, it's like oh yeah, let me move my bookmark. But yeah, see how soft like the the pencil like it looks like the you know the like the line work is, and you mm -hmm. get in with the grays and stuff. Hold on, let me see if I can make that better. <laughs> Did it That's work? Okay. Is it working? Yeah, it's it's a little blurry. Oh, there it goes. There we go. <laughs> there we go. But yeah, it's, it's absolutely lovely. I like Thank you. That, those two pages uh, in particular are traditional. Um, traditional? Yeah, that was, well, you know, they've been heavily edited, but. <laughs> yeah, hold on. It, that seems to do better when I do that. There we go. Yeah, there you go. Nice. Yeah. But yeah, it's very, the, the lines, I love it. It's so good. That's also why I bought my. <sighs> I bought some of the art from you. Oh yeah, I forgot you bought that one. That's I one. did. I bought two pieces from you. Yes. Um, yeah, I like to. Um, I just got done doing a bunch of sketches for our patrons too, and I like to keep my traditional skills up to up to snuff. Yes, this piece is my favorite. I love this piece. Oh, and I've mentioned before. This is going next to my crow piece. So <laughs> those guys in the chat know it. But yeah, this is totally going next to my crow piece. But the way that you have like your the way that you did the inks on here is exactly mm -hmm. how it looks like in the book. So when you get the soft like grays like right here, yeah, then the outlines and then especially like the eye work, mm -hmm. that's what it looks like in your book. And I'm amazed that you can do that, especially like like digitally, yeah. or even like if you scan it and then put it in a book. Because how does that work? Like if you scan it like mm -hmm. traditionally like this, do you have to do a lot of cleanup work when you go to go put it? Um, on to like digitally like or into an actual piece that you're trying to do sometimes yeah especially when uh you've got the still have like the non-photo blue peeking through yeah. the pencils um you definitely have to adjust like the contrast okay and, you know um try to get rid of all that stuff you can kind of see it like around her nose yeah, yeah. a little yeah. bit but i kind of like that so that's yeah that kind of thing yeah so i see that, that kind of stuff it's good got a strange quality to it that's it does but it kind of makes it lovely or it makes it like ethereal type where you can see like the blue in it which is kind of deep kind of neat but yeah here we go look at look at the babe <laughs> beautiful like cityscape yeah it's so pretty i love it thank you okay hold on give me a second turn around oh <laughs> got hit with energy drink in my nostrils <laughs> uh so would you like to tell people a little bit more about your bound book uh, yeah, so it's a uh, sci-fi horror post-apocalyptic story. Um, Natalia Kane sees monsters uh, when when one of them feeds on her. Seth, they become bound together, and uh, he's kind of like a demon, um, and he feeds on her like energy. Um, but there's not too much revealed about that. Uh, no. Even when, even when you get to the end of that book, you'll still be wondering what exactly is going on there but um <laughs> it, i'm very much influenced by uh 80s and 90s 90s uh manga and anime and yes um you know some some you know i grew up reading like marvel and dc and stuff like that but as i got into my teen years and anime became a thing you know in the united states um i really really went hard into that stuff and uh yeah, that's kind of the aesthetic I'm always trying to to capture. Oh yeah, immediately from the first page when I saw this, I got like Bubblegum Crisis, Battle Angel. Yeah. I got uh, 
Oh shoot, <laughs> Sega's attacking me. Ghost in the Shell, like kind of somewhat yeah. Venus Wars as well. Uh, you know, all that kind of awesome yeah. stuff, but it's it's just cool. Uh, Thank you. Really, that's really uh, dig it. that's real. That's a real honor to hear people say that stuff because uh, those are by some those are the, some of those are my biggest influences, like Ghost in the Shell and uh, Battle Angel. Oh yeah, oh, here. Here. Uh, Here's more of the lovely, like the line art, and then mm. just the gray tones. Like, I can't. Oh, come on. It's a little blurry, but it's okay. Whereas my, I can't tell which hand my page, <laughs> page and hands are on. I don't know. Let's see if I can get it. There, there we go. Nice. You kind of see like the grays and like the line work. It's really nice. Thank you. It's always like a, a struggle mm -hmm. to find the balance. Because when I first started, we first started doing this, I put like gray tone over everything. And it was really dark and it was you know too dark um so i had to figure out over the years how to mm -hmm. find the balance and uh so figure has a question here mm -hmm. manga influences ito um, junji ito for sure oh, yeah uh masamori shiro yeah um not i don't know about abe or in no way but uh atomo definitely i look at akira a lot to uh mm. kind of see uh kind of gauge where i'm at you know <laughs> to see am i even coming close to you know that level of uh akira is such a classic yeah yeah yes uh no i'm very excited to have you on because i i want to talk more about this and okay, super right. nerdy with some anime we can do that sure, oh wait hold on let me give you let me give you a big yeah. The Kira Club. Nice. I'm always looking through this. Uh, ooh, ooh, yeah. It's got, the, it's got like all the cover, like the chapter covers and everything. Yes. So, so that's kind of like it's kind of like the print that I have over there. So it's got all of them inside of each other. Oh, so it cool. starts with the bike, oh, yeah. and then it goes all the way into Tetsuo. And then it's got everybody into like the uh, nice. the gun pose at the end with the city. Oh, yeah, I dope. think I've seen that. Um, but uh, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's got it's got like little notes from him too, like what he was doing during like each year and everything, which is cool. Worth worth checking out. If... Oh hell yeah! So figure says, oh hold on, figure says, oh hell yeah, Akira Club. <laughs> mm. Also another yes, it blows me away. Yes, that style's awesome. Mm. Oh, in a way, did Vagabond? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Some of the mangakas, I can never remember their names, but if I see their work, I'm like, oh, yes, yeah, that's who it is. Yeah. Yes. I have a very hard time keeping track of especially <laughs> Japanese names. So. Yeah. I do really love uh, Junji Ito, though. I love his style. Yeah, it's just sure. the line work on that is amazing. Glenn has a question. Sure. My favorite all time movie. Mm. Um, hard. It'd be a toss up between like Alien or Blade okay. Runner. I, I can. I kind of see all of those influences in your work also. <laughs> yeah, it was one of the earlier uh, influences where, yeah, as soon as I saw his stuff, it was just... Yes. Uh, it's very, yeah. Like, where is it? I kind of see. Oh, here. Here's a good page. Oh, shit. I really like uh, David Lynch movies, too. Oh, David Lynch is good. I like yeah, David Lynch. Okay. Awesome. Can you guys see? There we go. There's one with the yeah. demon. But, yeah. Um, Sexy rain. You gotta like post apocalyptic, whatever, in like city times. You gotta have like a good rain scene, you know, have yeah. to have a good one. I feel like that that's a must, but yeah, yeah, you gotta have that. Uh, there he is. There's that. Rain. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Like in the you know, Blade Runner, it's pretty much raining the whole time. In the crow, it's always raining. It's um, raining legit, like a thousand percent of the time. In the crow, I don't think it's not raining. It oh, nice. I'll have to check that out. Uh, yes, they are making a actual live action Akira that should be coming out soon, and I would like to see this. But a fan made ones, there's been some really good fan made movies over the years. Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> uh oh. Is Phil Bed writing it to more ladies at Kroger? I'd say so. Yes. <laughs> you guys are silly. Uh, so, what are your what are your plans with the Bound book? You have more chapters going to come out. Uh, yeah, we're hoping to finish book one, you know, uh, the first twelve chapters this year. Okay. Um, I don't know if that's 
going to happen, <laughs> but uh, that's what we're aiming for. Um, okay. So that's that's Natalia's story. That's like the whole thing. Um, it, it will continue after that, but um, I always thought of, of Bound as one one story with a beginning, middle, and end. Um, okay. So what you have in your hand is the first half. So there'll be at least that many pages, if not more. Um, oh, okay. So that's pretty. It's pretty chunky. What is? What yeah. is there like seven ish chapters in here? There's, yeah. Well, it's, number six was a double issue. So. Uh, yeah. Okay. So about um, six. Okay. There's so about pages in this, and there'll be at least yes. two bit more. Um, uh, it is a lovely. So I'm working on chapter nine right now. So. Oh, nice. Yeah, and we're trying to uh, just. Um, Keep it, keep it going. We, we've, you know, we're finally after all this these years, uh, we finally got momentum going. So, trying to trying to keep it going. Um, and then uh, there's going to be some some animation. Um, that no one knows about yet, but uh, oh, it's fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna take some time to work on that, and then uh, okay. it's, like, it's gonna be like a proof of concept, um, just That's a short, neat. short animation that uh, accompanies oh. the book. That's cool. I like it when uh, it seems do that, or they'll make like videos or something mm -hmm. based on. Let me see if I can get that to focus. I love this. Thank you. This is a cool skeleton. I can't tell in super pro skeletons. <laughs> Half my room is skeletal remains <laughs> for whatever reason. Yeah, it's difficult to draw a skeleton. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we're, um, um, we're, we're then we're going to promote it for a while. It'll probably take some time until the next book. But um, okay. But because uh, it's been so long since we started this, <laughs> uh, it's been a long time. And yeah, uh, I, said, I like. I like the idea of it being one contained story. Um, and hopefully if we could pull it off, uh, the last few pages will be in color, but- um, How neat. Uh, Are you gonna do that. the color? What's that? Are you gonna be doing the color? You're gonna have somebody else do color? Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll be doing the color. Um, it's something that we always planned on because uh, when you pick up the like Tonkaban of like Akira or whatever, a few pages will be in color. Oh then, yeah. So that was something that we always wanted to do. And I think it'll work with the story. Um, I think so. So yeah, that's uh, that's it. I mean, my life is very boring, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's not boring, yeah, that's awesome. Doing, uh, we're doing one more show this year and then. Uh, and what show are you gonna be doing? Uh, we're doing uh, the E-Town show in Elizabethtown here in Kentucky. It's just like a one day show. Um, okay. So now but, my. My last guest is at a con this weekend. It's a horror con. She's in Georgia. Oh, cool. But there's some cool ones coming up. So yeah. I'm kind of excited for that. We're going to plan some kind of tour where we're promoting Bound. And okay. See, maybe just stick local. I don't know if we'll hit up Michigan again next year. But okay. I'd, like, I'd love to do Motor City. Um, Motor City would be fun. Uh, there's a lot of fun people there. Yeah, actually, you know what? Anime conventions too would be really yeah. Hit. We've done a um, few. We did one out. We were living out west for a while, and we did one in Portland a couple times, and that was really really good. Portland, Oregon. Yeah, uh, I know Baltimore. Well, DC now it, it got moved over there, but the massive one is Otakon, and oh, cool. then there's a couple huge ones in Toronto, and then here in Detroit, uh, Yomacon, which is literally around Halloween weekend, which is cool. Nice. Because like kind of like half horror, yeah. anime, and then some comic stuff, so that's kind of oh, like cool. neat. Uh, but yes, um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, Miss So has a question: Who are some of your current favorite artists? Uh, current favorites, um, I like uh, I like Nihei. I like uh, I like Blame. Oh, and, uh, Make Bio Mega. Um, Maybe and some of his other work. Um, that you can source and stuff. Obviously, Maybe. like, Ooh. or I don't know if you've ever. I think I don't think he draws blame anymore, or or he switched off and let someone else draw it. Oh, but, I like that style. Yeah, it's it's kind of sketchy, um, which my stuff is kind of sketchy as well. Um, 
Oh yeah, I'm, I'm huge into schedule type art. I, I like that. Yeah, it got cleaner. I don't know if he got cleaner or if he switched to artists or if he got a, if he hired an artist to do. Oh, we got uh, a cleanup team. Yeah, oh, nice. very like post I yeah. like that. I'm gonna have to look that up. I like that it's a lot. Um, I really like uh, Mark Silvestri. Um, I still follow all those guys, even though I don't read. I don't really read superhero stuff anymore, but I still like Jim Lee and Mark Silvestri and, yeah. Mark and all those guys from the, the 80s and 90s. Um, Got to have those. Joe Mad was a pretty big. I want. I really wanted my pencils early on to look like Joe Mad's. I don't know. Yeah, uh, we could be picking up the Battle Chasers that just finally came back to you know, <laughs> 10 11 or yeah, whatever I, episode gonna, around now. I'm gonna have to, I guess, because yeah, I remember picking up that book and yeah, 2000, the, maybe 2000, something like that. Switch game um, over here somewhere, yeah, <laughs> for Battle Chasers. Yeah, I was kind of disappointed that he just like stopped it. Uh, <sighs> I know that's sad one series, unlike that, or your favorite TV show, you're watching a show, and then like it ends in like a cliffhanger and never comes back. And like, what the hell? You can't end it like this. It's bullshit. Yeah. 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 Movie, movie seven for sure. Yeah. Except for yeah. towards the end. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, I, I'm drawing a blank on more contemporary artists. Um, I like a lot of people that are dead. <laughs> like, that's fine. Yeah, you could you could like all the dead people you want. I have yeah. pro dead people. So <laughs> Atomo is still around, but I don't know if he's. I, I think he's just directing. I don't think he draws comics anymore. But um, I'm sure he still draws. But he, uh, Katsuhiro Atomo is probably my biggest influence, and Masamune Shiro. But uh, I think he just does like erotic stuff now. That's yeah. fine. There's some really good mangas that I love. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that are erotica mangas. <laughs> nice. uh, they're great. The <laughs> art on them is phenomenal. Uh, yeah, cool. yeah. Uh, some good stuff. Uh, you live in oh, Portland? Nice. Oh, nice. I miss Portland. I was there for four years, but. Paranormal investigation team. Did we, did we miss that? Ask him your questions. Oh, okay. I will journey. We'll get there. Don't worry. Uh, life is nice. Yes, it is nicer when I have power. I would like a, more power all the time, actually. Oh, well, Blame movie. Uh, the the one on Netflix? I liked it. Um, I did, probably didn't, you know, do it justice, but I thought it was good. Um it would have been cool. I have to watch this. I'm about four year, five years behind. I haven't even watched the Bleach live action, and my my guy is in Bleach, so that's how far oh, really? behind I am. Yeah, I haven't seen that either. Um, yeah, the um, one of Bl the Blame on Netflix is 3D animated. And it's okay. Yeah. All right, I'll have to I'll have to look that up because uh, yeah, I gotta watch the Bleach live action because my Avi, my Avi's my guy. Oh. <laughs> I met him in person, and he was tall as hell. Oh, and really? literally, and I couldn't believe this for a guitarist had the softest hands I've ever held oh, in wow. my entire life. And I'm like, how is that possible for a guitarist? And I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. yeah, I don't know. Uh, okay, I will ask him your questions. Uh, <laughs> what's the main questions? Uh, do you ever do storyboarding? That's one. Um, like for, for film or? Film TV? or you also said you did some stuff for games before, so. Yeah, yeah. Um... I mean, I do I do storyboarding for my own stuff, but uh, I have not done any professional storyboarding. Okay. Yeah. Uh, when I think of your AI question, because you asked like five, so uh, what do you think about the AI? And then uh, how do you think about overseas work versus AI work? Those are all CJ's questions. So I'm trying to think of these off the top of my head from the last time. <laughs> um, AI in general. Um, I think, Skynet, AI, yeah. whatever, you know, whatever we're getting cyborgs with. AI, AI art, I think. Yeah. It's it's impressive what the computer can do. Um, uh, there's always some kind of tell where something doesn't look right, quite right. But I guess the same could be same said about my art. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> your uh, art? No, your art is fantastic. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. It's it's well, at first I was pretty angry about it, but um, then 
I kind of just let it go and it's just like, you know what, it's fine. No one's going to be able to do what, what I do because yeah. most of the stuff comes out of my head anyway. So like, even if you took everything all bound and fed it into a computer, it might do a good job imitating it, but you know, how is it going to tell the story? And like, yeah. I don't know. I don't think about it as much, but you know, when I first, <laughs> when I first heard about it, I was pretty, I was pretty pissed about it, but um, I just, I would, I, I would prefer if people, if they made it and they, you know, I see a lot of it online and, and social media, I would prefer that people just be upfront about it and just be like, look, this is all, this was made by the computer. I had no hand in this basically, instead of, I, I, I still, um, there was a uh, one artist or supposedly artist on Instagram who is obviously promoting his his work, and it was like um, that famous Japanese um, poster artist who did like Godzilla posters and um, yeah, Star Wars, every, you know everything. He's a really great painter, and like the AI was basically replicating it you know perfectly uh, but with whatever the prompts were and you know it looks really great but you know he's not really he he does like the hashtags where if you look scroll down you can see oh a mid journey and ai and stuff but you know he's kind of promoting it as his own work and or their own work um and i think that's a little deceptive because you know the computer did and as a as someone that does digital art, um, it's been a it's been an uphill battle to get people to like accept digital stuff, um, and that this doesn't really do us any favors because <laughs> um, people already see it. Some people already see it, digital work as cheating. So yeah, you just type in a few words and the computer makes it for you. Then yeah. But this has kind of always been a thing in the art industry, especially since like Photoshop and things like that came out where they'll take like other people's art, kind of trace over it also and kind yeah. of like, you know, take their own mm -hmm. thing. Like I've been to cons where I saw people put up prints of somebody else's work and like claim it as their own type stuff. Yeah. So yeah. it's literally been going on since the dawn of time anyways. I mean, but you know. Yeah, that was still... kind of my conclusion that scammers were going to scam and people that want to make AI art is cool, but just be upfront about it and don't, don't, don't call yourself an artist. Cause you're not like, yeah. it's taking me decades to, to, to get to yeah. like, the, the level that I'm not even happy with. So like for them to just type it into a computer and have yeah. my, my skill level in two seconds is kind of, uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah. I was actually talking to somebody about this earlier. We were talking about, well, somebody that took somebody's art and traced it basically and like kind of pouring out of their own. And mm -hmm. I used to watch a lot of art streams way back in the day and people would take like vector type art and they would do like, just a layer over a photo and just like trace it. Yeah. And they're like, oh, yeah. I drew this thing. And it's like, yeah. no, totally not the same, yeah. the same thing. Totally not. Yeah, it's uh, that's how I can always tell when people are tracing photos and stuff. Um, you, you, it's yeah. it's pretty easy to spot, especially if you know if you spent any amount of time drawing, you know that like things don't look that proportionate, and then they don't look that like realistic just without a shitload of of, of practice and and dedication. And yeah, that, unfortunately, that's an easy it's an easy way, and, yeah. and it's, it it's almost. I think it's acceptable in some cases, like in design, um, when you're doing like advertising and stuff like that, where you just got to get the job done. And, you know, I don't know. I think it, there's, it's a gray area, but yeah, I'm not, not a fan of just like tracing photos and stuff like that. Yeah. I like when creativity and I like it when, because like when I first started doing art, we can get to this thing in a second. When I first started doing art, I would try to replicate something and make it 100% photorealistic to me. Mm -hmm. And then I would get upset with myself how it wasn't perfect, how I would see it like on the paper. Yeah. And it took me like 30 some years to realize that it doesn't need to be perfect. I can make it my own thing and like do all yeah. that other stuff. And I think uh, messing with mediums really helped like charcoal because it is messy. <laughs> it just helped me like bust yeah. out of that mold yeah. anyways. 
but I kind of like it when I like over exaggerate the eyes or facial features and like when mm -hmm. I'm doing portrait work. I like it my own. I like it when it's messed up. I like it when there's flaws because for whatever reason, when I do it like that, I take more pride in it that I was able to finish a piece, especially when I don't use pencils. Mm -hmm. uh, if I was able to finish a piece and move on past the flaws to, you know, finally actually do something that I'm proud of. So yeah, no, I love um, I love charcoals. It's been like I think it was like 2006 or something last time I used charcoals. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I used to love the uh, life drawing in college. Um, it was one of my favorite classes because you can just it's just kind of like free. I think I feel like that's why I kind of started um, why I used non photo blue so much because I could just scribble and go nuts and not worry mm. about yeah. um, so. you know, each line being super precise. Um, but uh, yeah, charcoals are great. Um, and as the, like you said, those flaws, I've been talking, had this conversation multiple times, but it's those flaws in old and like golden age anime from like the 80s. Oh, um, yeah. It's all those like squiggles and, <clears throat> you know, each frame, you know, if you, there's a, I remember seeing a frame from the Battle Angel OVA and it doesn't look good. <laughs> like it, it, she, her face is weird, you know, like yes. it's just a frame, but like, yeah in the you know fraction of a second with the, all the other well-drawn frames it works and it make, gives it life and yeah. all those little, like squiggles and inconsistencies yeah like when you watch a lot of like the old studio ghibli movies uh mm -hmm. like Najka, like yeah. not even a lot of the the lines will connect right like some yeah. don't they're just kind of like their kind of free form but it mm. kind of gives it more of like the painterly style which i kind of yeah. really enjoy which is neat mm -hmm. and I, I kind of really like that a lot yeah um, i love Jeep stuff um the yeah the so it's so simple but like the movement is so fluid and yeah just real master uh what was it francesco Matino was accused again i'm not sure if anybody knows in chat go ahead and put that in there i'm not sure uh digital horror is hard but yeah 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 it it um it digital art just opens up a new set of, pro of problems so like you've had you've got like your problems that you have to overcome when drawing you know on paper um true with ink and everything, but uh, digital art makes some things easier, but then there's a, a whole another set of <laughs> issues you have to like overcome. So like, I don't know if one's easier than the other. Sometimes I feel like traditional stuff is faster, but then sometimes I feel like digital stuff is faster. So I don't know, it's a tough, it's a tough call. Yeah. I'm also saving a bunch of questions and the things, so we'll get all back to those, but I'm trying to just like bringing up some of the stuff that we're kind of talking about now. So I'd say light boxing is different because if you're going to do a bunch of sketches and you have scribbly lines and you're in a light box to trace over it to do better line work mm -hmm. for a crisp, oh, yeah, clear for sure. thing, that's yeah. different because you are already drawing those sketches. What we're talking about is people that take actual photos or something and trace over in a layer on digitally. That's yeah. different. They're not yeah, drawing no. it. When you do that traditional manga where they yeah. they sketch it out and then trace over it, that's yeah, that's completely different. That's not yeah. the same. Because you but, need solid, clear, crisp lines, especially yeah. if you're gonna go to print, you can't keep they can't be blurry or messy. Mm. So that's completely different than just completely tracing an image in a layer yeah. on like Photoshop. Yeah. Yeah, if you don't follow a lot of artists online, there was like a wave for a while of, of artists that were just they just grabbed a photo, a pose, someone oh, yeah. standing there, and they just turned them into, you know, Rogue from the x Men or something. <laughs> yeah, hang um, on, let me, I forgot to mute my phone. <laughs> that's cool. Um, uh, yeah, and you, I mean, it's, it's just a yeah. shortcut, and it's it doesn't do you, if you're an artist, it doesn't do you any good to, Yeah. unless I, you're really pressed for time and you and you got a deadline or something, then you just yeah. have no choice. But I've just got to trace this and get past uh, it. I see that happening more so now. Like it was kind of bigger back when Photoshop kind of first happened, but I still see it now when you see like advertising logos, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to like someone's like pictures or whatever, they'll turn it to like kind of like that animated style, but they're yeah. vectoring it out type thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Okay. Archer, when he does his sketches. Yeah, you know, he's all digital. He's not, yeah, when yeah. you lump him in with AI, he is definitely, yeah, he was early on, he was the person that made me want to do digital art, the way that he was able to blend all the colors and everything. Oh, yeah. In those early, like, deviant art days. Um, oh, man. Just trying to figure out how he did that stuff. Yeah. I remember being on Guy and being just absolutely <laughs> enamored with people where they would post digitally, like digital art, and just trying to figure out how in the hell that they did that because it looked so clean and so smooth, and they had all mm -hmm. those awesome colors. But yeah. especially when you had like a really crappy old scanner, it was not going to show up. <laughs> Whatever you were doing, it's <laughs> not going to <Yeah>. happen. <laughs> it will. So. This is another point that I was trying to get at to you. If you if you follow Kickstarter, I don't mm -hmm. know if you guys got the email from Kickstarter, but they now put out a bunch of rules uh, pertaining to AI. If you use any amount of AI in your project, you must disclose in the thing that is AI created. You cannot say that you created it on your own. You have to put that on there. Oh, so cool. I have a feeling, yeah, so that's cool. I like that a lot because there's a lot of people that were posting like art books that were AI art um, on there. And I think they kind of got busted for it, but they said that they'll take it down if they find out that you're creating AI and not disclosing that it's AI. It must be in there. And um, I think it'll kind of always be around, like digital stuff has always been around, but yeah. um, I think they might crack down more and more depending on where, how it's being used, especially yeah. in the art industry. Yeah, it's probably, I mean, definitely probably gonna have to be like a case by case basis but uh yeah as, i think as long as people are upfront about it i think I, I i feel like it's it's okay i mean i'd rather see someone else someone's like actual work or someone yeah pay, you know an artist to make make you the, the artwork yes. they need but um and even if your work isn't as good as you want it to be if you put a project on or if you're posting your work and you start out in your basic levels that's the most fun for me as someone that loves art and is an artist is watching an artist progress from the time that they first start putting their art on to where mm -hmm. they get at where they they're at in their career and i think that is just absolutely fascinating to me yeah yeah one of the one of i i didn't get into berserk until you know a few, few years ago but uh oh, yeah. you can really see his progression um from that first book to you know subsequent <laughs> uh volumes where things get more detailed and just just better drawn all around and i'm sure you know some of that's you know his his assistance at the time and stuff like that but um yeah it's always cool to see someone really come into their own yeah especially when they try or they're scared to try a different medium um or a different subject matter and they do it and they start nailing it and then they, you know yeah. they get really excited about it that that to me is you know that's a proud moment <laughs> my teachers my art teacher's name was miss white <laughs> uh, as you not miss her that is for sure <laughs> yes nazca is it's one of my favorite uh my favorite i'd say animated styles and just the story alone is just so yeah great. really kind of underrated I don't super underrated well. yeah i was gonna do some nausicaa fan art but yes. i didn't get around to it but... Ooh, you should for one of the whatever yeah. you're gonna go do yeah it's it's i've got it i've got it like sketched out and everything but i didn't get there around to finishing it um <laughs> um but yeah, yeah. Nausicaa, I feel like no one really talks about it very much. Everyone talks they about it. They uh, don't. Um, the mangas for that are phenomenal. And I really wish people would go back and watch the earlier yeah. Chibi films because they're just, they're just so good. They're so yeah. well done. The stories are just lovely. And okay, so <laughs> one of our, a couple of our people host a weekly draw along interview show it's called between the lines and phil is not an artist but he submits every month every every week <laughs> a trace on piece it's just hilarious and i you know and i appreciate it because <laughs> it's coming from the heart phil <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh i can appreciate all the forms of art because i just enjoy art 
Uh, but I, I, I love a traditional piece when you have mm -hmm. a piece in there, when you can look up close and you can see the different types of mediums and the lines used. That's my yeah. favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we didn't mention him earlier, but Kim Jong-E was, uh, okay. who passed that, away about a year that ago. That was actually. <laughs> oh, yeah. <there> <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I actually took one i took his class um oh it, nice it like a character class that it was like six like episodes basically um and yeah it really improved my uh my skills just watching him and how he handled things and you know people want to jump to that level where you're just drawing uh, just from your head and uh, yeah but like I think people need to understand that he practiced all day, every day since he was like eight years old or something like that. So yeah, like crazy month to get to that, you know, that that skill where you you can just start drawing something and it just looks <laughs> it looks halfway decent and without any pre sketching uh, or erasing, yeah, you never like fixed anything. Um, I think that's something that every artist attains to have. And I think that's the one thing that stumbles and blocks a lot of great artists mm -hmm. is they can't fully conceptualize from their head what's in their head to their paper. Mm -hmm. And then they kind of give up. But just keep yeah. practicing. Just let it flow. And yeah. You, know, you kind of have to accept that you're going to fail you know, most of the time. Uh, <laughs> you just have to keep going. Like, yes. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that it's that fun. was my concept of art because when I was mentioning earlier how I wanted everything to be perfect and how I would just kind of screw up every now and then. Mm -hmm. My whole view on art changed when I realized, you know what? It doesn't matter how bad I fuck it up this time. The next time I do it, it's not going to be as fucked up. Like, yeah, It'll just you, keep getting better. You have to kind of embrace it. It's weird because we're kind of taught, or at least I was, that like failing at something is like, the worst thing ever yeah. that you should just be able to like score the goal or whatever it is that people think you just go out there yeah. and do it and you're good at it right away but it's it's the reality is that you're just going to fail over and over and over and over again yeah until you get to some kind of proficiency to where you're kind of know what you're doing <laughs> yeah that's the thing about art though because the more you think that you're failing the more that you're actually learning because yeah your brain and your hands will remember the line movements mm -hmm. of certain things yeah. and it'll get tighter and better the more you keep doing it. So it'll just come naturally. So that's what's really fantastic about art. And that's also cool too, is because anybody can really learn it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, some people might start out more talented than others, but it's the one thing like music that you can like any of the arts, really, you can yeah. just get better at just by doing it more. Right. And yeah. just don't give up on it. Just keep doing it. Yeah, if yeah. you have a passion for it, especially, um, yeah, um, yeah, Todd McFarlane. Uh, oh yeah, Jack, yeah. Jack, I guess Jack Kirby could do that too, where he was like Kim Jong Gi, where he eventually got to a point where he could just sit yeah. down and draw a page just in ink. Ah, um, supposedly, I, I I don't know that for sure, but that's what I've heard. <laughs> um, Neil Adams, yeah, Jim Lee, Alex Ross is another one that uh, Alex I Ross, really, I love his paint. Yeah, I can. Like, I don't know what it is about painting and watercolorists. I could literally watch someone do that all day long. And yeah. it's just mesmerizing. So when everybody, anybody goes on and starts doing that, or just they start inking, mm -hmm. I, I just, I'm hooked to always sit there and watch that all day. Oh, excuse me. Okay, that's mm -hmm. what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a whole nother um, debate about, what's a product and what's art um, yeah uh i'd say that's true with a lot of the artists that like especially if they hit up conventions and they have long lines they kind of bust out kind of similar type art mm -hmm. just to get it out because they are so in demand so i see that a lot with several especially with a lot of the most popular ones and when you go down to like the conventions it'll be kind of similar similar poses but you know, that happens to a lot of people. I can say that with the same thing with uh, Jenny Frisian. I love her art, but a lot of it's kind of stale-ish. Like, it needs more soul to it, and a lot of it's kind of the same. But I still love it. I still appreciate mm -hmm. it. I still love it for what it is. It's still great art. But... Yeah. I I mean, I look at that stuff, like, all the time. Uh, yeah. Like, when I'm on uh, Instagram, I'm just – all my Instagram is just art. And yeah. so, like um, – 
I'm just scrolling through, you know, Marvel, DC, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't, I'll take inspiration from any of that. I don't care. Like the, uh, yes. I prefer uh, um, content that, you know, grabs me, but um, I, I appreciate the skill that went into that stuff. Yeah. I have a lot of artists. I have a lot of cosplayers and I have a lot of like the fantasy uh, special effects people because what I'll do is I'll just oh, flip nice. through my thing and then I'll do like a little like 10 minute thing where I'll just sketch whatever photo pops up <laughs> so that's I do cool. that a lot <laughs> that's fun for me and then I hide that and then I don't post that anymore because I want people to know I'm creeping on their pages but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I, I, I started um, asking permission from people when I use their yeah. photo, I'll start out because like, I just, it just seemed like the right thing to do. Uh, Cause I obviously used your pose. So. Um. <laughs> Hi Schulte. Thanks for stopping by. I'm sorry if I'm getting to you late is because uh, uh, questions and chat keep freezing. So I, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Don't worry. And I'm, if you're asking questions, I am starring them. So I'll get to them soon, but yes. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for everyone for stopping by. It's been a great chat so far. I know. Oh, yeah. Glenn is super into our germ, so you probably super crushed him. If you tell him Superman sucks next, he's leaving, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, um, Louie. Yes. Uh, Bernard Chang uh, will talk about this also, and he would say, like, his mentors would tell him, get to the point where you erase less because you're getting better at your line work. So he would say, try to do like a drawing and then do like, maybe like set yourself to like 10 or five or three, like times when you erase a line or something mm -hmm. and then try to try to just incorporate whatever else you're doing in it because otherwise you're going to be constantly focused on erasing that you're not going to do the work. Yeah. Which is definitely true because it'll get in your head that something's not perfect enough. Yep, yeah. yeah. Um... Yeah, I'm kind of to the point where I kind of accept the flaws to an extent. Um, but uh, there's still a lot of stuff that I want to go back through and bound to, <laughs> to, to yeah. clean up. <laughs> yes. Wow, we're getting a lot of, okay. Let's, let's, let's. Oh, you know, I have seen too many pencils and inks of just Alex Ross. I've seen mostly just his paintings. Now I'd want yeah. to see more of this just to oh, see he, what it is. He does um, his paintings usually gouache as far as I know. Um, and he he actually pencils and inks everything first. So you get the black underneath the gouache. Mm. Okay. Gives you the real gouache like, is interesting. Gradient, yeah. gradient look to it. Um, I mean sure he does other like mediums too but I know that's one of the things he does a lot. Yeah. Yeah, he's really very, very talented. Yeah, gouache is something I haven't tried, and I want to do more ink washes. Uh, like, I was doing watercolor for a long time. I did painting, mm -hmm. but I want to get into, the, like, I have the Indie inks, like, that kind of a wash type thing. Oh, like, cool. That's my next set of, like, I want to test that out soon. Yeah. Yeah, I would say so. Depending on, too, the convention and how busy it is and how long their lines are, it, yeah. I would oh say. yeah, yeah. There's nothing wrong with having like a set, you know. Yeah. You got your set bust that you always do, or the poses, like you know, yeah. like, that's that's like the, that's the game, you know. People yeah. people like that stuff, and that's also it helps you improve too, because you're just sitting there busting out the sketches over and over yeah. again. You get, get some memory where you just kind of remember all this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I would love to meet her and talk to her about art because I do really enjoy like figure saying here. I do enjoy her art. Uh, it's, it's lovely art. I enjoy her color palettes. They're very nice. It's just, it's kind of just missing just something, just something for me. Like, especially on like a cover, but it's, it's just something is missing, like more soul. They're all kind of just like same poses mm -hmm. or stiff kind of, but I really love her work. I really do. And her portrait work is amazing. It's just, I just, I wish she would put just a little, I don't know something more into what she does yeah I'll have to, i'm not familiar with her work i'll just check it out um, uh if you see her art or her covers you would probably recognize it because it's got a lot of bold outlines a lot of the same color use so you would probably recognize it if you saw it but it's great art don't mm -hmm. don't even realize like at all it is great art it's just 
It just needs a little hint of, a, of something. Hmm. Uh, she did a couple. Uh, look at uh, the not the not the something's killing each other, and what's the house of the uh, house of slaughter? She did a few covers for that, and a few covers for <laughs> the other. I knew that would get you back, Glenn. Yes. Yeah, this is also true. Some art, if you blow it up, does not look great, but it, her mm. art would look good because just specifically of how graphic her art is, like the bold mm. line work, uh, how clean it is. It is super clean and the coloring of her art. So it would look good pretty much done in any size because it could register like that. Yes, I know I told you. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of people in Chicago today. Hmm. Okay, uh, this one I'll let slide, and then I'll go back to the, some of the older questions that we had piling up. <laughs> yes, good question, because you well, do some really good gory art. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Uh, hmm. yeah, you do some good gore. <laughs> Thank you. That's a... Uh... Goopy. Well, you can't see this. Let me slide it a little bit. You can think of that, and I'll pull up some pages. Yeah, trying to think of. Uh... Get lots of skulls, lots of blood, lots of goopy stuff. All the kind it's... of stuff that I like. Well, here, there's more stuff. There we go. Whoa, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> I think probably Batman. I think you, Batman. I'm sure, I'm sure someone's done it before, but. Yeah. Okay, how do you want to how do you want to take him out when you're drawing when you're drawing him? <laughs> that's, the, that's the question. How's he going? Yeah. Out? <laughs> how you gonna, how's he going out? How's he dying in your art? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, uh... like this, you're gonna make him do this. That's what's gonna happen to him, right yeah, there. Yeah, maybe someone yeah. Uh, just completely. <laughs> you just completely him. come in, just obliterate him from the inside. <laughs> Because he is just a regular human, so he yeah. is, which kind of also makes him a badass because yeah. he just puts on yeah. a rubber that he goes out there, you know, doesn't give a crap and just kind of jump around doing whatever. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I love oh, Peter yeah. Momoko's work. I, I do as well. Yeah, I was drawing a blank on the women artists, but yeah, women a, artists. Yeah, number uh, of women that I really yes. look up to. I love her artwork. I love her earlier artwork, and I love the the artwork that she did for Crow Left, the covers for that. I love mm. the color scheme that she did. Hi, Kev. Actually, you might know Kev if you do also conventions, because he also does conventions name sounds in right. Michigan. You, you probably see it. He does horror art. Oh, cool. Yes. You probably ran into cool. him if you've been here. Cool. Jack Lantern. So, yes. That's his art. Uh, yes. Yeah. So her her art does look great on cover again. Yes. Hi, Travis. Hi. Yes, I'm powered. Look at this. I got lights on. I got internet going. I could take the lights off. Uh, Would have been fine, but we didn't have internet at the same time, so I couldn't play Switch. <laughs> so my power died. So yeah. <laughs> that was that was the that was a true killer right there. Yes, House of Slaughter. Yeah, she did a few there. Oh, here we go. Okay, this is a good question, because there's two. You have the OG original manga, which is slightly different art style. Then you have the one that's kind of more commercialized, which came out, which is the one that you see for the anime. Do you watch either one of those? Or have uh, you read either one of those? I've seen some of the anime, and I have the first volume of the manga, but I, don't know, mm -hmm. I didn't know there was a different. Mm -hmm. and so I might have the newer one. I'm not sure. So I bought it used for like. You know, it's probably the one that comes like this, which is would be the regular One Punch Man. Yeah. But if you want to read his original story, there is uh, his original sketch version of it, which is slightly different. It's kind of a slightly different art style as well. It's more sketchily. Mm. It's different. It's it's different. I like both of them. They're both interesting. They're both fun. Uh, I really enjoyed season one. Season two was kind of not so great. Yeah. Hopefully <laughs> season three comes back and kicks way more ass because, yes. Yeah, I was surprised at how funny it was. Um, oh, so funny. Uh, you know, sometimes culturally there's like different sensibilities with comedy and stuff. So I was really surprised at how, how funny, how much I was laughing. Okay, CJ, because he's in the car and you can't really type. What do you love drawing the most and what do you hate drawing the most? 
Um, I the, I love drawing hair the most. Hair, <laughs> hair is I, great. I have no hair, but I. <laughs> I, I um, <laughs> and for those coming I, in, here, let me make you can keep talking about that, and I'll show yeah. you. Some, some I, more I like I like I love it when when it works like that when I can get yes. that. Glossy, way, that, that look, that kind of like manga look to nice it. Nice um, swoop. Yeah, where sometimes <laughs> it's the strand. Um, there we go. I like how you got all the shines, but I also like how you can't really probably see it from the camera, but there's multi layers of like the gray in here, mm -hmm. which is neat. But yeah, 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 look at that. Look at that, people. Look at the eyes. Aren't they lovely? I don't know. Ah, camera. Yeah, eyes, eyes are another thing I love drawing. But, um, eyes are my favorite. Eyes, eyes and hair. I am a huge person on the swirly woo woo hairstyle. <laughs> uh, that's my favorite. For a um, long time, I hated drawing hands. hands oh, were, hands are awful. <laughs> hands I, and feet. I, you know, I love the way that hands look, but they were yeah. just so difficult uh, to get to even somewhat competent at drawing hands. Um, yeah. And one of my friends said that <clears throat> hands were like, uh, like. <laughs> mini boss on um, like a, a nintendo game that was impossible to beat you know um i had like <laughs> life uh, so yeah i don't know if i hate drawing hands i've gotten better at it but um <laughs> probably like vehicles things like that vehicles and lines yeah what you do in great cities though so uh you you could probably rock some futuristic vehicle things because you do a lot of you do already a lot of line work already in the cityscapes. Yeah. Okay, was, here. Check this sick ass yeah. panels out right here. Oh, oh my god. I'm make this bigger <laughs> again. Hold on. That was something that I also had to like, you know, overcome my fear of drawing like perspective. There you go. Look at the sick dude. I like really. like oh, there's more of her hair. Poopy <laughs> hair. There you go. I could kind of get it in there. Kind of kind of working now. How are we gonna get this? Yeah, over? I kind so of there's, forced there's the bad guys. Out um for some right. reason early on i okay. couldn't draw her bangs correctly her bangs uh -huh. let me see. come on focus <laughs> what do you do it come on yeah yeah doesn't want to that's weird it, it's being mean it's just the cameras are just have a mind on their own just not wanting to do anything kind of maybe you kind of see that oh my gosh okay i tried um, <laughs> hopefully it was uh some kim jong -gi, uh buildings in the background there i was just like uh, yeah there's, he there's some stuff. there's some on the front <laughs> <laughs> a lot um, of front and on the back but yeah i like also how this is swirling i love that thank you yeah i like to incorporate spirals i don't know you know tim okay. burton -ish, like st type stuff but, oh nice i don't know where, where that just crept into my mind but i'll put spirals in a lot of stuff Yes, Mob Psycho 100. Yes, I actually, in Otakon, they had the theme song band there, so I have, I, I met them. Oh. <laughs> I have a side poster from them. They're great. They were fun. Uh-oh. Uh my Okay, so my chat froze. Uh, so, hold on a second. So this is the last message I have in my chat. Yes, black and white art is great, and I love that how he gets his grayscales. Because Kev, you popped in a little late. Oh, here we go. Boom. Let's see if I can show this. Maybe that'll show up. But can you see it? <laughs> no. Damn it's it. Not bad. Camera. It's not a little blurry. It's not bad. Though. The hell, camera. <laughs> Come on. A big a butthole. <laughs> okay. But yeah, uh, it's yeah. very delicate, like how you do your grays. Okay. Let me just. Okay. Can you see that? <laughs> yeah. You have to say it's really. It the whole book looks like that, really. It took me a long time to find the balance between like how much gray do you put in there and how much do you leave. Yeah, but I say you do a great job because it is black and white and it does have like it's not all, okay here. Here's a pure almost all white page, but see all the gray tones and it, it tells a story without there being a lot of color or darkness to it, which is pretty neat. So yeah. a lot of the panels look like this, but it's just breathtaking. So. That's Thank awesome. You. It really like for some reason it brings it. It like gives it another. I mean, obviously, it gives it another level dimension. Of, yes. Uh, okay. So my chat's still frozen. So uh, this is the last message that popped in. So while that's happening, I'm gonna pop to the starred questions. Oh, bye, John. See you later. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, McFarland. 
yeah, let's, uh, well, I'll pop up to the questions that I had saved. Okay. Digital or analog? Uh, like be all end all, probably analog, but uh, I lean pretty hard on digital. So <laughs> I rely uh, on the ability to be able to like just redraw things, um, you know, on the fly. Um, but I do like the, like you were saying, the kind of, you get that the tactile feel of, uh, actual inks piece yeah. of work. Uh, I like it too that you can feel it and I like when like you get art and it kind of like light properties shift it and it kind of alters the art that's that's mm -hmm. fun I like that's fun you can't really get that in digital yeah. you get it on certain like if they print it on like a metal type thing sure but like yeah there's some art especially if they do like an iridescent type thing like mm -hmm. that's awesome because that will change the properties in all kinds of different ways, which is awesome for art. Yeah, okay. I was I grew up just doing traditional stuff like before any of this stuff was available, so I would have to stick with you know traditional analog, but um, because it's something you can always just kind of you don't need like you like the power was out at your place, you know you can still draw, but. Um, yeah, I, I do right. like digital stuff. Okay, well, <laughs> I like your mix of both because I do like your uh, traditional and your. I'm very much like a uh, by any means necessary, you know, outside of using AI. <laughs> <But> <laughs> <laughs> whatever you got to do to get the job done, you know. Perfect. Uh, okay, so Phil wants to know what's your favorite tunes when you do your art. Lately, you rock uh, I've really started, I mean, I've always been a fan of John Carpenter's music, but uh, okay. for some yes. reason, his more more recent for like the Halloween reboot stuff, those soundtracks for the last few chapters of Bound, I will I will put those on repeat mm -hmm. and uh, that. And it, and it works, like the mood of it works with what I'm drawing and like, okay. I'm not saying that <laughs> I deserve mm -hmm. John Carpenter his music but uh um i that stuff really like gets me going i'll 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 put on you know i i listen to a lot of like metal and stuff so I'll, yes I'll... also bitch and shirt bitch and shirt <laughs> thank you um i really like black metal um so and there's no shortage of of this stuff this, these days so i'll i'll go to like black metal promotions <laughs> channel and just put something on uh yes i'm also a fan of the black metal i'm a fan of the japanese rock metal nice. i am wearing one okay rock shirt because it matched your artwork oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> nice. i put that on <laughs> sub track uh yes i'm sorry that my twitch chat was lonely because i i don't have it pulled up for whatever reason i can't get the chat to load on mm. uh Twitch when I type because I used to be able to just respond on there. It just it won't do it anymore. Oh, I'm sorry that you were suffering there alone, but I'm glad that you came to the YouTube side. <laughs> yes, yeah. 80s horror scores. Yeah, uh, definitely. There's some good ones. Uh, For sure. Yes. Yes. I mean, John Jack Carpenter is kind of unmatched a little bit. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and uh, you, I listen to like uh, retro wave or synth wave, like uh, Carpenter Brute and Perturbator, stuff like that. Um, uh, sorry. Yes. You're suffering there alone. I know. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, have you read Chainsaw Man Mega or have you watched the anime? I have not. I'm aware of it. I'm really bad at like <laughs> contemporary stuff. Um, I'm just like, I'm always, I'm just like all my free time is drawing, so I don't, I don't, don't have time, time for as I yeah. should to even read the manga that's like sitting on my shelves. Mm -hmm. I have it's stacks bad. of comics and it's stuff. Bad. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. It's so bad. Yeah. I have stacks. Yeah, no, I think we yeah. all understand that. I also have a horrible fascination of buying just regular novels. Yeah. Yeah, no, forget it. They're they're not being read anytime <laughs> soon. <laughs> yeah, it's it's weird though. You think that like you would be be into it but um i'm kind of i kind of follow the david lynch school of like i don't 
he doesn't watch a lot of film and he doesn't keep up on <laughs> film, but you know, he's an incredible filmmaker. But yes. Okay. I start a bunch of people's questions. Okay, let's get back to the questions. Okay. Uh, what's your favorite medium to work with? Besides digital, what, um, do a lot of ink stuff? Yeah, graphite for sure. I love the graphite. way ink, ink. I love the way ink looks, but I have the most control over graphite. Mm -hmm. um, Here, let me make this larger again. And I, like I said, I used to want my pencils to look as clean as like Joe Mads yeah. or Jim Lee's. Um, yes, you could see. Maybe you can't, I don't know what it's doing. All your line work here, and then you got the gray kind of washiness yeah. under it. So it's kind of got like sketchily tones, which I am a massive fan of that. And then I love your little crows, but the eyes, the eyes and the lips are what got me on this. I was like, no, nope, I need it for buying it. I was like, yep, no. Yeah, sometimes, I, sometimes I give her those black lips. I don't, it doesn't always happen though. But. <laughs> no, it works though. You can't really tell, but like there's a lot of detail just in the lips alone. Like there's little tiny lines and those like the white bars, and then yeah, it's it's fantastic, mm -hmm. dude. I'm so glad that I had to run back to meet Dave. Yeah, I really appreciate you. Uh, not, okay. not a lot of people want my uh, original stuff, so I really appreciate it. Uh, so uh, I, the one, the other one on the other side is like one of my my favorites, where I feel like I yes. know that like perfectly. So I really appreciate that you chose that. <laughs> No, that's why one of the things that I go when I'm there is I've been picking up more uh, original art pieces instead of prints because I used to buy, like, as you can tell, I used to buy all kinds of prints and stuff. But a lot of times lately, like when you go, they're almost the same price as the print. I'm like, no, I'm just going to go buy original prints or I'm going to go get a commission or something done. So, yeah. no, I, I kind of looked out when I found you at the I did because I was literally... Mm -hmm. I, I said buy to film and I ran back in just to buy that stuff for Dave and you were <laughs> right next door. Mm -hmm. So that looked out perfectly. So yeah, that was right. Okay, we got more stuff happening. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh, okay, I lost my where is that? Okay. Oh, okay. Do you listen? Mm. I, I do. I uh it's it's what it's weird because you would think that like you would need complete 100 percent this is all i'm concentrating on and, but i feel like when you do that it's too you, you get too you like psych yourself out or you get too kind of rigid or you focus too much on what you're doing and you get things just don't you need to be relaxed and you need to not be trying super hard like it's, it's yeah. this weird like contradiction of like I need to be focusing on this, but I can't focus too much. So I'll put on the X Files or oh, nice. Terminator or you know oh. something I've seen. Yeah. <laughs> something I've seen a million yes. times that sparked I sparked his interest big time. Yes, I don't. Uh, oh, nice. I don't. Um, <laughs> it's something I don't need to like be paying attention to too much. Because that's why I don't watch a lot of new stuff. Because like I'm. I'm usually drawing. So if I'm going to be having something on in the background, it's either got to be like a podcast, like something like you're doing or something I know already, like the X-Files or, <laughs> or uh, you know, alien or something. Um, yes. So CJ is still driving. So he says, kiss my mobile ass worm. And then if you don't know, this is comic book worm. That's numb. So <laughs> that's what he's talking about. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I'm sad about that. Like he doesn't really do like it, well, Campbell doesn't do any interiors either, which is sad because some of his interiors were my favorite things growing up. Mm -hmm. And I'm sad that he just does covers, but I can understand if you yeah. get super burnt out when you're forced to do so many yeah, like, that's, in a time period. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't understand it when the nineties when Todd McFarlane it was like issue like twenty six or something where Todd McFarlane let Greg Capullo take over. And I didn't, I didn't understand that when I was like, you know, 15. Um, yeah. And I was just like, so bummed out that Todd McFarlane stopped drawing Spawn. I mean, even though he was writing it and still doing covers and stuff. Um, but now I get it. <laughs> now I understand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, so he, Joe Mad's not doing the new Battle Chasers. He's not drawing it. 
I don't, he doesn't have anything to do with it, but I think he did one or two of the covers, but he's not doing interiors. It's somebody else. Yeah. It's such a but, grind. I mean, yeah. It, and to, it really like, you don't know how much you don't know until you start drawing a story. Um, and you're, you've got to draw situations where you wouldn't, unless it was in the story, you didn't, you would never think of drawing it. And like, oh, now I've got to draw a kitchen behind someone. <laughs> You know, it's it's so weird that it's it's intimidating kind of. So I can see why after so many years of doing, <clears throat> you know, twenty pages a month or whatever, uh, it would it would just be hey, yeah, you get super burnt. Yeah, I can see that, especially well, the amount of work that like Campbell still does, like he's still busting out covers and prints and all that. he does a ton of work. But mm -hmm. it's more probably stuff that he wants to draw, not kind of like forced to be along with a storyline kind of thing, which yeah. that can get really exhausting. Like if you have to do something specific of like like what your publisher, editor, the, the, the writer wants and you're not following along, like that's got to yeah. be just a real kind of drag because you can't fully be creative like how you'd mm -hmm. want it probably. Yeah. Yeah. So I can see that. I can get that. Yeah. Yeah, I'd love to see some of those guys, though. Like, I'd love to see and, you know, guys and girls, I'd love to see and other I'd love to see them uh, just start doing their own thing. Um, I loved it when Peach Momoko was doing her own. She had some kind of post-apocalyptic comic she was doing that oh, she would throw um, up yeah. every she would throw up pages every once in a while. And I, I haven't been at least a year since I've seen any of that stuff. Um and uh i'd love to see especially when they get to a certain level where like they're getting residuals hopefully and they're they're making a decent living i'd love to see them do their own thing and uh, i mean joe matt obviously did battle chasers but yeah um that lasted a long time and it's shocking that it's coming back after all these years because it had such a big fan base yeah, oh, which is nice. That's awesome when that can happen. So yeah. that says something to his artwork, though, that people loved it so much and they wanted to see yeah. more of it. So well, I'm guessing, it. yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> uh, guessing with him, I'm guessing it it just paid more to to do because mm -hmm. he went back to Marvel shortly after yeah. you know whatever that fifth or sixth issue it was, and I loved his uh, Ultimate X Men. I have those issues where they're just in pencil. Yes. And man, oh. like that stuff was a pretty big influence on me when we first started Bound. And his pencils were just phenomenal. Um, so yeah. I, I, I always want to see what's inside the artists. Like, you know, I like, I really like Giger and, and yes. some, you know, Salvador Dali and some other like Ooh, more traditional yeah. artists because it, yeah. You My got babe, what was right there. <laughs> you got what was in their soul, you know. It was kind of like unfiltered, they were tormented, but, pretty well. Yeah. He was definitely tormented. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It it's was amazing. In, uh, Hundreds of years later, that people, you know, finally getting the respect he needs and you know yeah. deserves. But yeah, for sure, That's it's kind of like unfiltered, like creativity. I feel like. Um, and that's kind of what I want really wanted to do with Bound was just kind of put my heart and soul into it and not have it be like this just kind of like fun adventure. I wanted it to have kind of a deeper, uh, deeper meaning. Oh, wow. Yeah. Have you ever seen that? It's insane. No, so I've never he seen will this. draw a thing like this big. Uh -huh. That's his thumbnail. He'll draw it like this big and sometimes he'll blow it up. And that's how he does his, his rendering from the oh, tiny wow. sketch that's like literally this big. It's insane. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Like, I don't know how <laughs> he does it, but he'll do a thing like this. It looks fantastic. And then make wow. a whole full on piece. But yeah, they're literally like not even an inch big. It's insane. Wow. It's so cool. cool. And my thumbnails look like garbage. <laughs> Mine look like hot trash. I'm not gonna lie. Hey, JD. <laughs> yeah, he's good. Uh, okay, I saved a lot of questions because CJ is at a stop right now. So let's <laughs> go <laughs> answer some of CJ's questions real quick. Uh, what is your ultimate goal in this business? Um, my ultimate goal is, I mean, 
<laughs> personal goal is to just be the best artist I can be. Um, yes. Creatively, I'd like to have bound uh, animated either as a film Ooh. or as okay. a mini series. Okay. It's the first book, anyways. Uh, yes, and then you just drop it in. This is what we're talking about right here. <laughs> Boom. Um, it has yeah, I, it, 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 it's Ooh, in yes. my head. It's okay. already animated. So, like, yes. it, it just. Oh, oh yeah. To I me, these see. are almost like the storyboards for the animation. Um, I can definitely so see this animated. Yeah. What that's, that's going to take, I don't know, like, how, you know, how that's going to work or, or how that's going to come about, but. That's my ultimate goal is just have it exist. Okay. Um, yeah. Animated wise, would you do 3D or would you do like the 2D, like 90s style? Oh, yeah. anime? It, would it would have like, to you be. You gotta do that. Yeah. It would have to be as traditional as 2D oh. as I could. Yeah. Like, if possible on cells, but I don't I don't think that's gonna happen. But uh, <laughs> yeah. To, I don't see uh, anybody doing cells too much anymore just because yeah. of how timely. It it's is and costly, okay. but it still looks phenomenal. It's the best. Come on. Yeah, it's uh, like a it's like a dead art form almost. But um, yeah, it's sad. That's sad to me. But it, it is literally the best. Even two D gaming is the mm, best. I, yeah, I enjoy that much better. Yeah. But yeah, no, this I could definitely see in uh, some of the styles that we talked about before. But also like Armitage or mm, yeah. Venus War style or yeah. uh, Iria. I love Iria. Oh, yeah. nice. Iria is great. That was good stuff. Um, okay. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> the long term goal. But <laughs> the long term goal. Okay, here's an easy question, then I'll get back to more of uh, CJ's questions. Pop tarts or toaster strudels? I don't know mm -hmm. if I've ever had a pop toaster strudel. What? It's the uh, most delicious thing on the planet. It's probably so bad <laughs> for you. It's so good. It's, it kicks a pop tart's ass. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Pop tarts is to, crusty compared to yeah. a toaster strudel. So so. Pop tarts are just trash, but yeah, I used they to eat them all the time. They, yeah. they're either just cold or in the toaster or microwaved. I, yeah. 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 So if you like that and you try a toaster strudel, you're gonna be like, "Where the hell have I been my entire life?" Yeah, yeah. Toaster strudel is like more, more like a pastry. It sure. is more like a pastry. Yeah, it's delicious. Okay, you literally have like a thousand questions in here. Okay, <laughs> what printers do you use for your comics and why? Oh, tough question. Um, we've been for years, we've been using Kablam to print the issues. Interesting. I've never heard that. Hold on. Let me make you larger again. Um, uh, not me. There you go. They, oh, nice. They've been, they've been pretty good, um, with us. Uh, they, you know, they tell me, they've told me before when I, you know, had the incorrect file sizes or oh, nice. accidentally duplicated a page. They, 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 they're pretty, uh, they're pretty reliable. We've thought about switching, um, but, uh, you know, I, it's, it's one of those things where like, these are just kind of temporary. Okay. Um, like once these are done, I don't know how many, I don't know how many individual issues we'll actually end up having on hand in the future um because we just want it we want it to be yeah you want to be like the manga style format yeah. which is nice because it reads <laughs> yeah I've, I've had people ask me if we if, if it went you know yeah right, um well right it's fine but, because when well when a lot of people don't know this like when you read traditionally japanese this way but mm -hmm. when you read a Korean manhwa, it's that way. Oh, <laughs> it's it, different, it, yeah. So it flops depending yeah. on which one you're you're reading. Yeah. Well, my uh, I have like a bunch of older manga from the '90s that were printed like this when manga yes. was first becoming popular. Here. Oh yeah, the anime so, comics. Yeah. yeah '90s. Uh, I have a whole bunch of that. Legend of Mother Sarah. Like Image was huge on that. Dark Horse was huge on that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Dark Horse and Viz and. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. CPM. But um, yeah, for some reason, I don't know. I just stick with the left to right, but um, I think it would work the other way. Um, and then. Uh, yes. Yeah. I There's actually, a lot of Ito stuff coming out, and I'm yeah. excited for it. Yeah. It's cool that he's getting 
uh, recognition. Uh, yes. Um, I think it also helped too because he also was another one that came from the manga style format and actually mm -hmm. merged his way into book format mm -hmm. and comics. So yeah. uh, he he actually really did a lot. And what was it, around 2000s when they started doing his live actions for like especially like Uzumaki and uh, like the other stuff that he has came out. So it, it really oh, helped cool. him. I haven't seen this. I'll fish like that. Huh? Oh yeah, the live action Uzumaki is uh yeah. yeah, it's that's the art style in that is awesome. If you like Tim Burton, like the style yeah. in it, it's fantastic. Nice. Oh, uh cool. you don't want to know, Kev. It's too many. It's far too many. <laughs> <laughs> Way too many. Um, uh, okay. So JD was late and he wants to know what's your favorite manga? Uh it's gonna be Akira for sure. Um, yes. You had That's the art book. Or definitely whatever. what I look up to. I actually have. Yes, we are showing off some of that earlier. I have more Tomo stuff. Ooh. Ooh. The layouts and keyframes nice. from the movie. <laughs> Which, talking about animation, I'm trying to, like, teach myself. I, I actually nice. got a degree in animation, but I never oh, did nice. it. nice. Cool. With, with it. So I know how to animate. I just I need to like learn the Japanese ways. Um, Ooh! But like, yeah, the stuff is kind of invaluable as far as like reference. Not that I'm gonna like rip it off, but like oh. you look at someone's work and be like, okay, how did they handle? You know, that's my favorite part. Like when an artist does like an artist edition, or like they come out with the black and light just lines. Yeah. Uh, on a book, that's my favorite. I'm gonna go to that. Ooh, is that an actual that's cell? Like fake, yeah, fake actual up. cell. <laughs> it shows, the, yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, yeah. I will not ask your questions. You'll you'll be safe. I'll be back. <laughs> you, you're back. Atomo is definitely like. I don't, you know, I, I know he had a, had assistants and stuff, but he had that. He had his style down by the time he started working on Akira. That. That's kind of like the level I want to reach reach to. Okay, yeah. nice. Uh, I actually enjoy it. I have not seen the movie, but I've seen the clips and some stuff. I actually like it. It looks nice. I'm all for animation and animated styles. The one that I had a hard time getting around was uh, the What If series for, for Marvel in, uh, mm. on Disney. For that, it was just too 3D, like, I don't know. Oh, I, can't, like I can't explain it. Like yeah. Film and and animation kind of yeah it was just too st stiff like it wasn't like um i don't know i just had a really hard time getting into that and i just did not super yeah. enjoy it so frank favorite brit is frank doberman okay. <laughs> two more likes i don't know for uh yeah the what if series uh the animated what if series on disney were they kind oh, of like watch motion? That Were they like motion? Comics? It was like kind of cell almost, but like three D cells. Mm. But it was like just I can't explain it. It was like just a very strange style. I just had a hard time getting around it. Yeah. 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 I have a, I have a hard time. I'm not against three D, but I have a hard time accepting a lot of it. Like it yeah. just doesn't, for whatever reason, this doesn't hit me the way that mm. like I'm like hypnotized by traditional 2d animation like yes. stuff from the 80s even disney stuff from like the 40s and beyond like oh, the stuff yeah. the way it moves just kind of like puts me in a trance almost <laughs> like i just can't yes. I think it over how well it's done when you if you watch like the behind the scene footage that like they did at disney for like the people that were doing just like the framing or like the live action models and how they would move and how like yeah. they would recreate it it's it's literally breathtaking mm -hmm. and what i really enjoy about that old style because you would have like the watercolor backgrounds yeah. compared to like a 3d now it lost its magic it really did it really lost its magic mm -hmm. that's the problem that you have with the 3d some 3d stuff i can get into and i like 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 the tangled and all that stuff when it came out, I enjoyed all that stuff, but it it mm -hmm. really lost its magic. It lost its touch, and that's yeah. that's sad to me because that's my childhood. <laughs> I, yeah, I, love yeah, I think it's a, a, a like we said earlier. I think it's those flaws that really like it's that unintended like life that 
Yeah. They, they didn't count on oh this you know squiggle or the this isn't quite perfect. It just gives it that that life that you can't get from from vectors and three D models and. Okay. So let me go back to uh, Miss So had a question way back like an hour ago. What inspires your story ideas? Uh, this is. This is a tough one because it's kind of, I'm going to sound insane. <laughs> I don't, I think found it, it comes to me. Like I, I'm like a channel for it. It's weird. I, I have no, I don't have like a single thing I can point to and be like, oh, I wanted to tell this story because it, it like I, I'll, I get scenes in my head in random times throughout I'll be driving and get a scene in my head and that will make its way into bound, you know, sometimes literally years later. Um, oh, cool. So I don't, I don't sit down and think, I knew I wanted to create something that like kind of honored my influences, but I didn't know, I had no idea <laughs> what bound would turn into or, or I just had, I had this first scene, the first few pages that you read in bound was what I had like sketched out in 2006. Um, uh, oh, here, let me make this. And uh, it it just evolved on its own. Um, like, just look at the, like, I like the layering. I can't even tell you what pan I'm even on. <laughs> <laughs> like, look at the layering, but also like the grays. Like, I don't know, just something magical about that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I, I wish I could be like, oh yeah, I, I wanted to tell this specific kind of story. I, all I know is that I wanted to have something that was like a little bit heavier in terms of subject matter. I didn't want to do a comedy. I didn't want to do like action adventure type okay. stuff. I wanted something that was darker yes. um, because those are the things I've leaned towards most of my life. So mm. you could say that it's all the things that I experienced from you know, four or five until now that like makes it up the, all the chemicals in my brain. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. I don't know if it's coming from a different place in the universe or, or another dimension where like I'm being told this stuff, but uh, I literally sit down and start working and sometimes things just like the scene for the next chapter will come to me. <laughs> It's yes, funny. it looks like a lot of things from here, this distance. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was ton of so I could not get to, like I got to like the midway point and then I just could not get past the animation. So I'll give it another try and go. But it literally just it took me a long time to get through the few episodes that I watched just because I couldn't get past the animation. And I'm very picky about animation. So yeah. that's why I couldn't the the newer berserk stuff I couldn't get into. Mm -hmm. I watched like twenty minutes yeah. of it and couldn't. <laughs> yes, yes, Kev. Yes, high five, Kev. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you never know. Like like Bob Ross called them ha happy accidents. You know, you don't you don't know what's gonna happen. It's very true. Okay. Also, sup, Biggie? Okay, you're back, so I can ask your question that you left. Okay, so he's got some saucy questions. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll get back to all the other questions. But the first question he dropped about an hour ago was, <clears throat> "What super chick would you like to do a bondage cover for?" <laughs> uh, probably Psylocke. Ooh, good choice. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Also, where the other? Oh, I lost your other. I'm sorry, Ruth. I lost your other question. Oh no. Uh oh. Uh oh. Don't shoot me. Hold on. Let's see if I can scroll back. Uh, would you could like sort this easier. Okay. While I'm looking for that, because I totally screwed up. I'm sorry. Uh, Phil. Good question, Phil. If you could have a booth next to anybody you wanted an artist alley, who would it be? Hmm. I don't know if I could get him to talk to me. Probably J J O Bar. Um, oh, if I could get him yes. to come out of the shell a little bit. Yes. Someone, someone like that. I don't know. Like you mentioned Simon Bisley earlier too. Yes, so. I did. I mentioned both of them. They're both mm -hmm. great. Because I know some people have had bad experiences with both of them, but I think if you just talk to them like normally, 
Yeah. Or if you like geek out and be like, oh, holy shit, well, that's what I did. And then Biz was like, now we're taking a picture, but you got you gotta give me your middle fingers up when we're doing yeah. it. And I'm like, dude, you're you're my hero. You're probably <laughs> yeah. like to uh to learn from uh, probably Jim Lee. I, I don't know. Just just yeah. someone that I could probably like take advantage of my time with, but someone that uh, I'd I'd like to just like talk to and, and get to know definitely like J.O. Barr because I he's feel like nice I'm more on his, we're more on the same. Yes, uh, he's fascinating. When he was doing his art pieces, I was watching him just talking to him. He was like, don't give up on art, just keep doing it. And you're like, mm. you never know. So I yeah. enjoy, I enjoyed him a lot. Rude, I can't find your question, your other questions. So if you can please just throw it in there because it keeps eating all the messages every time I flip back up <laughs> and flip back down. So hold on. Now I'm now I'm frozen because I, I flipped too far. Uh, oh, Kev, you're gonna do a saucy Zatanna? <laughs> I see that. I see that. I do I do have a It'd be good. sexy <clears throat> chop top from Kev. That's <laughs> quite sexy. <laughs> uh figure i don't know about you but i do this like all the time because i actually have a horde of squirrels <laughs> outside that i feed. Oh, really? uh yeah i do it's pretty bad yeah, that's cool I, my mom and i make them like hand oat frozen peanut butter <laughs> oh, <laughs> <that's nice. laughs> they can't come to my door and like, feed them they're all uh named fat so they're godzilla squirrels so <laughs> Yeah, so, okay, I'll catch up to CJ. Okay, how about that? Because he does have a lot. Okay, here's a question from Nam. I'm sorry that you waited so long. Would you use AI to generate your own references? Not the art, but references. Yeah, I think that's fine. I don't even, like, even, I'm not even opposed to someone, I mean, not, not that my opinion matters anyways, but um, I'm not even opposed to someone using AI to make something and then, like, painting over it, you know? Uh, like, yeah. To be like, like if you're gonna go out and take a photograph and then paint over that photograph or whatever, or mm. draw over it. I think I don't know. I don't. I don't want to be one of those people that's like, you can't do this because art's supposed to be, you know, there, there's no real yeah. rules, you know. Um, yeah. And there are standards for things, but I don't. I don't believe that there's should be restrictions. Um, there you go. There's your website. Oh, thank you. Your Instagram. Yeah, he's been dropping those the whole time, but I'm not really yeah. clicking on them because it's so funny. Okay. Uh, Sickotron wants to know, fruit roll-up or fruit by the foot? Uh, fruit roll-ups. Okay. What flavor, <laughs> are you, what flavor are you picking? Uh, you know, I like they, the blue ones. Whatever the blue yeah, one was, I like those. Up, man. Or the rainbow ones. Rainbow were good, too. Probably haven't had one since I was a teenager. I haven't had one in a long time. I don't know. I'm always like, a, you know, the fake grape is always usually the like fake grape. Like yeah. Purple, purple flavor. Yeah. I like you take a couple of them, you kind of like put them in one giant chunky square, just kind yeah. of leave them on the roof of your mouth for as long as possible. Yeah. yeah. That's how you got to do <laughs> either one of those. Yeah. All right. CJ. Are you a fan of multiple variant covers? I am. I've done a few of my own. How many would you say would be too many? Because there are too many on some. Like yeah, I would say the max should be like three. Yeah, three yeah. maybe well, five. I mean, but I, when I was I was like knee deep in Marvel, um, especially with like when Image first came around, and Marvel was doing uh, hollow foil covers. The, you know, like perfect. 92, 93. Like yeah. they had so many different like. Uh, it, they wanted everyone to collect all of them. And, that's all. Know. Second question. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was at the time, but now, you know, looking back, I can see what, what a gimmick it was and just like, yeah. I still love it. it. So, sometimes it looks cool. I mean, there was one, I remember with Spider-Man where he looked kind of three-dimensional. Um, uh, yeah, the holofoil uh, ones and like the holochrome ones. With, yeah. like, no, I was a sucker for all that crap. If you've got a die cut slash a hollow one, yeah, no. Yeah, now I see people doing... Uh, at conventions, I see people selling prints with a little bit of like mm. it looks almost mm -hmm. like gold leaf, but it's printed on there. Um, oh I yeah, think I think that stuff's cool. I see. Um, I bought a couple traditional watercolor things uh, from uh, Pascal, and he did it in kind of like the Ghibli 
style where it looks kind of like this, but it's his mm -hmm. own style. But he printed it on watercolor paper and then oh, he cool. embossed to like his signature on it. So mm -hmm. those are really neat. And then another lady that I bought stuff from did pearlescent prints, which kind of just elevated the art, mm -hmm. which was neat. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Uh, yes. So the stray dogs thing kind of killed it. The something feeling that children stuff kind of ruined it. There's there's mm -hmm. some like the hardly thin book, it that I know of has for the first cover 100 plus covers. Jeez. There's so many people because the thing with that one is they could get away with doing saucy Harley Harley Quinn art on it because it's mm -hmm. hardly thin. It's a parody book. Um, oh, okay. So a lot of people get exclusives for it just so that they can do whatever they want with the character. Mm. But there are so many, like you can't even keep track of them. Like if you go and pull up like a site that has the covers, it won't even show up how many they are because there's just that many. Like it's ridiculous. It is beyond <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah. I think okay. I, I'm also kind of like, I feel like um, the work should kind of just speak for itself and you don't, that, that was part of like the comics crash or that's one of the blame one of the things that was to blame anyways i don't know how true it is but is that the, there was too many variants there was too much there was too many gimmicks there was too many like you know every, different covers for death of superman or whatever and and like it i don't know i feel like it should be able to stand on its own and having like one or two options is cool but like when you get to all that stuff it just yeah because now we have ratios, then you have virgin ratios, then you have exclusive covers, then you have like variant covers, because there's mm. just too many floating around for the same book. And what pisses me off is I'll find a cover and I think it's something I don't have. And then I bring it home and I find out I have like nine of the same book. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, son of a crap. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, I've done that too. So. Um, yeah, and then there's, you know, people, they, they're into the more of the value of the the book as like an object, you know, where they want the first print or the first edition and because it's more, yeah. more valuable. Or... I, I don't give a crap how much any of my comments are worth. I love them yeah, all yeah. dearly. Like I, <laughs> I, I'm not like, oh, it's a key. I want to go buy it. Now nah, I'm buying because it's stupid <laughs> and weird. And that's why I'm buying it. Okay. Here's your question, Rude. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Darth Vader for sure. Oh, you're gonna pick Darth Vader as your second in command. Yeah. Damn, and you gotta be really evil then, because <laughs> Vader is the, the guy. Is, I'm telling the, you, at least original trilogy. You know, the original special. trilogy one. Yeah, yeah <laughs> Darth Vader uh, in Empire Strikes Back is, <laughs> is like the ultimate villain. In Good movie. movie. <laughs> Or maybe Pinhead. Death of Superman doesn't have enough covers. Give you more. <laughs> what the hell? How many do you have already? Uh, yeah. Okay. Let me go back here because I found it. more. The rest are all CJ's questions. Okay. <laughs> Let's get into some CJ questions. Do you think being optioned when you create your characters? Okay. So is, is that in mind when you create stuff? Or are you just creating stuff and to have that later on? Yeah. No, I don't really consider that stuff. Um, I understand why. I understand. I understand. Like I understand the business side of things, but I don't. Yeah. I don't give it the weight that I probably should. Yeah, you're too focused creating your own stuff, and then probably yeah. want to figure out stuff later on. Yeah, like, I'm not really worried about. It. <laughs> I think it happens every now and then. Like it'll build up to a point, and then come crashing down, yeah. and then you'll get you. Then they get rid of some stuff, and then they come up with some whole totally absurd other thing. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like it wasn't too long ago. Marvel was like, everything was like crossing over. Yes. So where like, so many you had to pick up 10 different books to, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In the I 90s, I there were two times that I liked that. It was the Batman Contagion story because it had Catwoman in it and mm -hmm. uh, Maximum Carnage. Those were what I was oh, running yeah. around trying to find every time they came out. Yeah. But when you're doing it on every title every month and like, 40 different titles it gets like yeah. i can't keep up with it it's too much yeah okay cj again what would be your dream project Ooh. uh outside of bound it would pr probably be like um concept art or storyboards for a film 
Okay. Uh, like a sci-fi film or something. Sci-fi yeah. film, nice. I could see you storyboarding some sci-fi, cool horror-ish type yeah. stuff. Yeah. Something like uh, cool. you know, like a Mad Max or a Alien Ooh. or something. You know, that would be great. But Alien Mad Max type thing. <laughs> I would I would watch the crap out of that. <laughs> Uh, okay, here's your question. Cushy corporate position. If you started with a great salary in 401k. Uh, no, I've been, I've worked, I've worked in like, I've, I've worked a lot of different jobs and I, I worked in a cubicle for four years and oh, it was cubicle. very low key. Like I, you know, it was very like chill most of the time. There was a few times where, you know, you get stressed out and or you yeah. get into disagreements with people or whatever but like yeah it's i know that that's i and i appreciate that kind of life but i know that's not uh, that's not it gets boring after a while especially when you see the same like gray brown <laughs> cubicles <laughs> every day and you're stuck in there yeah, yeah. No. i appreciate the uh the stability that it, that kind of life offers but I yeah i can't go back to that no it sucks like creativity out of you just being yeah. in my work where i see one cubicle off to the side i'm like i, I need to burn this down i can't <laughs> i can't uh what mainstream artist do you despise the most Ooh. Ooh. Hmm. Uh, oh. uh i don't yeah style <sighs> I'm not a fan of Liefeld, but uh, okay. I like him, but I don't. <laughs> I'm sure he's a super nice guy. DJ but... is gonna love you because he has beef with Liefeld. He actually <laughs> blocked him from his whatnot stream for asking yeah. a question. <laughs> I'm not a huge Twitter user, but I was following him on Twitter for a while, and man, yeah. that guy seems to be kind of miserable. <laughs> and I don't like. Yeah, he's. he's He's been very fortunate in his career and then like, yes i don't know Simple handily uh set foot in the pouch community <laughs> like i don't know i wanted well, yeah, pouches because of him i yes. i like some of his stuff i think he's very good at inking um mm -hmm. and i i think sometimes i see his work and i'm like oh that's that looks really cool but other times I'm, I, it just looks completely wrong and bad yeah but there's know. something also kind of it makes it feel more like a comic when you see that style because yeah. it's not really meant to be reality. Yeah. So when you see his style, I get it because it puts you more in his world mm -hmm. of the thing that he's creating. So I could understand that why he does that uh, in his style to me. That's how yeah. I see it. Especially like I was huge into the nineties, um, you know, young blood and all that stuff. Like I went hardcore <laughs> on yeah, all that same, stuff, yeah. the weird old characters, but it, it fit in his world because yeah, that to him was what superheroes and weirdos and things look like because he over exaggerated everything. So yeah, I it's it kind of it. weird that he <clears throat> there was a documentary about image. Yeah, it was it was up on YouTube and like Amazon and stuff. Um, I, I thought something I didn't know that he, he started his own like side company while he was at image when image was like at its peak at that time. Mm -hmm. And that, he, uh, he kind of like, yeah, I think so. Um, and he was like competing with his own books with his, you know, he's kind of like screwing over his coworkers a little bit. Kind of himself like, too. Yeah. Yeah. And it just didn't make any sense to me. And I, I mean, I, he's just young, I guess, but like, just, he was too gung ho, I think. Yeah. The, he calmed down a bit, work on more stuff, don't do a million things at the same time. <laughs> might, might be. Yeah, I, right. I agree. It's about, so. like, about cubicles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, when you see that every day, you're just kind of like, it sucks your soul out. Yeah, like, even, I mean, I was even doing like some creative work and it just wasn't. I was always thinking about what I could have been doing, you know, like you, at any job. I'm always, I was always thinking this is eight hours I could have spent drawing, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Okay. More CJ questions. <laughs> uh, how do you feel about the current writer and actor strikes? And do you feel comic book creators should have a union? Ooh. Um, I, I feel like Marvel and DC and probably like dark horse and image, I think I think Image maybe even has one now, but um, I think they should definitely have a union um, because that was why 
part of the reason those guys left in to start image was because they didn't feel like they were yeah being well, appreciated um, yeah. like they they felt like at least from <laughs> what i've heard is that they felt like they they were doing all the heavy lifting and uh <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i've never i've never met him but i've seen his tweets and so like oh know. he's got beef he went into his yeah. whatnot stream and actually got blocked by lifel from asking questions in um, his whatnot stream <laughs> yeah. he, he's, he he seems a little bit better um for, yeah. For whatever uh, yeah when you watch his live streams they're very chaotic and i just kind of like like they'll they'll be like three minutes long, but like two hours worth of stuff happens in like those three minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's kind of fun and like crazy because you're just like, I don't know what's happening, but this is awesome. And he's just like talking nonstop. And I'm like, okay, feels great. <sighs> Ooh, that's a good one. Um I feel like yeah, either uh, probably spider-man spider-man was one of those first comics where i really like I, that was my, my my first love you know like i wanted to like learn how to draw spider-man and i wanted to read spider-man comics yeah and i feel like they should have just like this is this is i know i'm in the extreme minority here but <clears throat> and part of what we're doing with bound is that it it does have a big beginning, middle, and end. So, like, those are the stories that hit me the most. Is a story that doesn't just keep going and keep reinventing itself. And I feel like Spider Man has gotten so spread out into like so many different way, ways. Like, um, <laughs> uh, that, yeah. I don't know. I think I think Spider Man should should have just remained this kind of simple crime fighting story that it was, and it okay. and it should have just ended with Peter Parker. I feel like mm. it's, it's some way or another. I don't know how that would work because it's, not, it's a franchise, and you got to you, you got to keep making them. But would you ever want to go back and do a traditional type? spider-man story where it gets back to that like maybe like a one shot or like a small little mini run would you ever want to do that kind of a thing just for the hell think, of it i don't think i would but i think it'd be cool if someone did um, yeah for sure yeah hey sergio okay yes so ooh, that's also a good one <laughs> uh mm. Mm, Who would want to play you? Yeah, I don't know. That's a tough question. What, that is a tough question. How much your manga genre would, would you want it to be? Mm. I think it would, uh, it would want it to be science fiction, I think, in some way. Um, okay. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, did a comic book mo movie about your life? Who would want you? To play you. I don't know. Oh, uh, trying to think of uh, you know that show. Um, I think you should leave. It's a sketch show. Ah, uh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Guy from like Detroiters. You did that show. Too. <laughs> I don't remember what his name is. I feel like I look kind of like that guy, or I, I feel like he looks like me. So I, I think I would want. <laughs> I know it's weird. It's the he's, he's so goofy, but. I think I'd want, I don't remember his name. I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> I can't remember his name either, but okay. Multiverse stories. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I know that's like, that's, that's their thing. You know, they're just, they just keep going with, they just, <laughs> they just keep reinventing it. And it's cool. But... Oh, oh, like, uh, that'd be cool. Yeah. I might, yeah, maybe when I'm old. Maybe yeah. when you're old. <laughs> <laughs> Run out of ideas or something. I'll just do by because I, well, you know, I yeah. I went through uh when I was in high school, I was like on a path to become a comic book artist. And I was starting to understand the medium and like actually like <laughs> <laughs> and actually uh get it. But uh I fear or self-doubt took over and I went in all sorts of different directions and I didn't come back to comics until uh I was 30 
Um, so oh. I could probably write a decent story about all the different paths I went down and mistakes yeah. I made. And... Interesting. That'd be fun. Yeah, I also <laughs> did the started off like random comics when you were little, and then you took a break, and then you jumped mm -hmm. around, and then in the '90s I got really big into the anime and the manga, and then I got really big into the Babe books. <laughs> 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 then I took a long break and then I got back into it like yeah. three, four years ago. I don't even know when COVID started. I don't know something. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. All right. Is there any other questions? It's almost been two hours. Holy shit. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, anybody else have any other questions? Because what I'll do too is uh, while you guys are doing that, I'll run through your website real quick. We can check a look at more of your art and then. Oh. We could probably just end it at the two hour mark because it's been two hours. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here we go. Let's open this guy. There we go. Boom, shakalaka. All right. Can I can all see this? All right. So you, let's go to your books. Check out your book. Yeah. I need right to here. I need to update it, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like so, the, the issue one or chapter one. That's an alternate cover. Um, which one? I can't see. <laughs> this one, one here? Uh yep. Yeah. yeah. So if this is the one for this? Uh, no, that's just the or first chapter. For the, oh, for the one yeah. that you have the single issues for? Yeah, but it had a, it originally had a different cover. Oh, same with, okay. Same with six and five. And okay, then. oh, so you can get the digital version here. Oh, it looks like yeah. they're all on sale too. So, hey. Um, <laughs> oh, you can also get a free eight by 10 print with any purchase, excludes digital. But look at that, look at that. That's a good deal. So if you guys are looking to look into this. So this is this book here, the bound book. Yep. Right here, the graphic mm -hmm. novel version. That would be the one that I'm holding in my hand. Yeah. And then the rest are like the single issues that you were showing earlier. But yeah, I like the you colors. Can't, you can't get physical anymore unless you're a patron. But, oh, um, boo. Oh, okay. Yeah. Some of them are sold out, but yeah, you can get some of them. But yeah, go for go for this guy. This guy. Is pretty good. Yeah. It's Thirty-two. So. The, uh, the artwork's slightly better in the. Slightly but, better. Oh, yeah. Now I would want to kind of see the crappier, sketchier art because I kind of like that. I'll, I like to see the I can send you all the <laughs> uh, if you please want. Do. Yes, please do. Because uh, I kind of enjoy that because I like to compare. Yeah. Like, I like to see like the original stuff because I I really don't me. I really don't like to look at the first uh, incarnation of of them. Um, <laughs> so. That's fine. All right. So I like some of the covers here. Oh, I like her right here, like in this little fur cape. Not fur cape, but it's all yeah. tattered. I like that. <laughs> yeah, I like things all like torn up and destroyed. Yeah. And... Oh, come on. It's a the apocalyptic <laughs> dystopian. It needs to be torn up. It can't look completely pristine, which is my one issue I had with the updated Judge Dredd movie. Oh, like it drives yeah. me insane because it's like they're supposed to be all grimy or whatever. Yeah. But then when you get to like the cityscape, I've mentioned this a whole bunch of times, but it just grinds my gear so bad. They're all like hot topic or like gap from like 2000s. And it's like, they're not yeah. even dirty. They're, they look all like, they doesn't make sense. They're like yeah. civilians off the street. Doesn't make any sense. I really liked, uh, I really liked Dread, but yeah, I, I totally get what you're saying. Um, <laughs> I, I actually didn't hate the Sylvester Stallone one either. I adore it. I'm sorry. I adore <laughs> it. But uh, it's just one of those cheesy 90s things like Demolition yeah. Man and uh, Dread. You just kind of got to watch them because they're great. Now, these are awesome. Are these sold out or are they still available for purchase? Oh, they're still available. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. I love this. This one's cool. I like how you got the pinkish red it's in the background, so you got more oh, colors in here. So that's cool. I like, yeah, there's the slightly different colors. Oh, look, your Samus. Nice. Thanks. Oh, cool. Oh, look, there's a battle. I like the band. Alita. Yeah. Nice. Oh, cool. I like the um the reds. The reds you pop in. I don't know what oh, yeah. it is, but black, red, gray, and white is one of the coolest color combos. Also, yeah, like, for sure. Uh, yeah, like it a pinky. To, uh... Pur purpley bluey is also mm -hmm. another hot cover. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. Vampire. Oh, Asher Boy. Oh, good. pretty, pretty dope. Yeah. Very cool. Super I definitely cool. need to update some of the stuff. But, uh... <laughs> You're like, I forgot that was on there. Oh, shit. <laughs> no, it's all good. I, yeah, I started to get to a point where, like, oh, I nice. don't hate, hate my work, but. You don't hate your work? <laughs> <laughs> But that's I, that's I, how you know you made it is when you kind of slightly <laughs> like your work but you don't really hate it as much but you still don't really want to keep looking at it <laughs> it's kind of how how that works 
Now, does all this ship? Oh, okay, I love the VHS. Now, what oh, are yeah. what are these? Just a gallery uh, thing that you did? Yeah, sometimes conventions will want they'll be juried, like uh, Comoricon in Portland, okay. Oregon. They uh -huh. don't they don't take everyone, so you have to have some kind of gallery for them to look at. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, usually I don't go for like the whole photo gallery thing, but it's kind That's of pretty. To... Okay. Yeah, okay. I like the colors. I do dig the colors. That's very uh. Oh, shit. What was that movie? Blade Runner. Like the no, background's also it. Ghost yeah. in the Shell. -ish. That's also yeah. what I was talking about. I liked a lot. Yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. God. Yeah. Oh, yes. I'm yeah. a huge I grew up movie. watching Godzilla movies. So. Yes. Godzilla. Go uh, yeah. No. Uh, I still talk to this day. If you watch a couple episodes back, uh, Marco, he mm -hmm. has a book called uh, King Jira, Hungry Like a Monster. It's about Godzilla <laughs> going rampage because he wants pizza. And it's literally my favorite thing I have read in years. And nice. uh, it's so amazing. I love it. Oh, this is, I love the colors. Oh, that mm -hmm. looks so cool. I like the blacked out, just him, Seth, yeah. <laughs> chilling in the background. Thank you. Yeah, oh, I, um, I like, I love black and white for the pages. Yep, okay, yeah. Yes. A lot of the people, a lot of people think that's oh, Frieza. Oh, is this Vampire Princess? Yes, it is. Yeah. Actually, yes. Yeah. That, that was uh, a <laughs> Vampire oh, Princess like laser disc. Oh, shit. Wait, hold on. I can't see it. Me... I love these. Uh, oh, yes. I love Vampire. Uh, oh, shit. Okay. I'm sorry. I was I ignoring the whole chat for the damn time. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 oh you're welcome yes thank you guys for stopping by yeah oh uh, thank you yes okay okay oh that's a good question because i want to know the answers to this i have some of mine and some of mine i couldn't stand and i threw it out <laughs> <laughs> I do. yeah i have stuff going back to when i was a little kid but uh I, yeah. I've, I've thrown out some stuff some stuff got destroyed like in a move uh but yeah, yeah I, do, I do, I, my default is to kind of tear something up when I know it sucks, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, I do, I do hold on to some things where I like the idea, but it didn't quite work out or, or, okay. um, or liked it at the time, but, but yeah, I, I've been keeping all my super trashy, just even doodles for whatever reason. And I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, I hate that so much. And <laughs> like, it just like pains me to look at it. And then like, I'll look at a good one next to it. I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. What the hell happened from that one to that one? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, how do I get back to that? Cause like yeah. the next time I'm going to draw, it's like all shit again. And I'm like, what the hell happened? <laughs> Damn it. Uh, yes. I appreciate totally. it. Go check out his, uh, uh, all those links that are down below, go check them out. Thank you. Uh, so uh, before we yeah. wrap up, what other uh, cons or shows or anything do you have going on um, in case the people want to know? Hi, Spider. Uh, yeah, the only one we've got coming up is the Elizabethtown one. That's uh, at the end of the month. But that's, that's it because we're focusing on just finishing Bound. Uh, okay. And then next year we're going to hopefully have at least like a Midwest – tour nice where we're hitting up you know within like three three hour drive type type thing um i'd love to come back to michigan and do more michigan shows yes. that's why i'm from michigan so we kind of have a michigan. nostalgia like yeah longing for it but uh there is a show in my hometown in november um that i'd like to do next year okay um, because cool. I've already done two shows in Michigan this year, so probably won't go back. Yeah. This year, but and I'd love to do Motor City, but uh, Motor City was fun. I went for the yeah. first time this year, and I'd say it was a step up from Cap City. Okay. Like uh, size yeah. wise and people yeah. wise, uh, yeah. So it was a step up from Cap City, and then um, if you really want to go big and get a lot of people, Yoma Con. Mm, it, yeah. That's, that's Detroit and that's uh the anime slash horror slash whatever because it yeah. falls on Halloween, so it's kind of all mixed in together. Uh yeah, definitely gonna look into that one too. And there's uh, mm. Kev, if you wanna talk to Kev, he he knows all the good horror conventions. He goes to a lot of them. <clears> but he also goes yes. to uh Grand Rapids uh and a couple of the other main cons in Michigan because he's from um 
he's also from Michigan. So cool. Yeah, I heard the Grand Rapids one was good. Um, yeah, the Detroit one was the first con I ever went to when I was like okay. 16. So that is kind of like a special, <laughs> special meeting for me. So I'd love to do that one. Um, there's a big con out here, the Lexington Convention, Lexington Comic Con oh, in Lexington, uh, Kentucky. Uh, I think so, a couple people in chat actually went to that this year. Yeah, Sam Raimi was there this year. Oh, nice. Uh, bunch of, it was just huge. I don't know. There's not a big con in Louisville for some reason, but there's um, a big one in Lexington. So There's a couple of really good sci-fi cons. Yeah, Grant, he says, yeah, because Kev, uh, his son even got a booth like a year ago, too. So, oh, cool. Yeah. Uh I'm sorry. Hang on one second. Okay. I will be right back. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. So you could schmooze with these buttholes. Okay. I'll be right back. Well, yeah, I hear, uh, I hear the Grand Rapids one is good. Um, <laughs> That's funny. <clears throat> um, yeah, like I, I was saying earlier, I'm from Port Huron, so I'd love to hit up all the big cons in Michigan. <clears throat> I really like that uh, jack o' lantern. That's cool. Yeah. It's been over two hours. I feel like it. I don't know where K pop went. Show you guys so the books I have. By my desk here. This is all the, the stuff is just really cool to me. And, you know, you know, it's just lines, but Let's see if I can get it. And just animated her mouth there, her eyes there. Oh, here's. That's well. And that's the background, which I think is just watercolor and gouache. And it's done on paper, I believe. Better. I made it back. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what to say. So. I can make you big for a few minutes, okay? Uh, this is. Okay. Uh, Random manga I picked up. Oh, pretty cool. I just like the artwork in it. Oh, nice. <laughs> kind of along the lines of Ooh, like cool. It's some cool. Oh, I like it. Cool sci fi stuff going on. Nice. Anyways, sorry. Is Portland Con pretty cool. Uh, Quarry Con is, uh, is really cool. Rose City is like your average kind of Comic Con. It's, it's, it's a good con. Um, not huge, but not, not tiny either. Um, a little bit pricey uh, for what it is, but. Yeah, uh, I think Nam, Sleepy, and there's a whole hunk of them that live over in that area that go, and, uh, Otaku goes oh, cool. over there. <laughs> Are you into football? No. <laughs> Not into any sports. Oh, I liked we're playing we're... sports when I was a kid, but um, yeah, hey. well, like, like Western comics. Um, I really like uh, The Crow and uh, yes. uh, Dark Knight Returns. Um, yes. Uh, some. Thing. I appreciate Alan Moore. I wouldn't say I'm like a huge fan, but like Watchmen and. <clears throat> um, some of his work is great. Uh, yes. Watchmen is good. A lot of people in the chat and I really like Watchmen. Yeah. Um, um, are you a DC or Marvel or indie? I was 
always more into Marvel growing up. Like I really like the Punisher and Spider Man and Wolverine and X Men. Yeah, uh, classic. When the, <clears throat> the animated shows came out, I think that was like right around our like you know yeah. timeline when we just kind of started getting back into this stuff. I loved uh, Batman the animated series. Oh, that was a good one. That was mm -hmm. awesome. Uh, so somebody in the chat already said to watch the fan made version. I think it was Phil. But yeah. there's also um, they are making a live action one. So hopefully, it's it. I hope it stays true to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm with uh, the the um, commenter there. <laughs> I don't remember who said it. I would not. Uh, yeah. I, I prefer, I like to keep dust jackets. I keep uh, mine. Don't get rid of those. It's usually a totally different set of art. I, I know um, Atomo is um, remaking Akira like 3D animated too. Interesting. Um, I don't know how well that's going to go. Yeah, Interesting. I, don't, mm. I don't know. I know that, you know, the, the film didn't capture the whole series and it was made before it was done, but I think it, I think it's one of the greatest things ever made. <laughs> and I think that for us to want more is a little bit greedy. Yeah. Um, because it's so amazing. And um, just like the manga is amazing and the, the the film is amazing. So I don't know, you know, I know, I understand people wanting more, but I, I'm, I'm kind of one of those people that just wants to leave it alone. But, you know. Okay. Yeah, so Nam has gone several times over to like the port on the air and he says comic book art friendly. Yeah, we, yeah, there's like six comic shops in just in Portland proper. Okay. Um, Portland's a great, great city. Um, okay. All right. It's now over the two hour <laughs> mark. You guys anybody got any final qu any questions? And then we'll go run over to the Biggie Shacks channel because he's got his trivia going and we could go watch that but anybody anybody with final questions because i know my my thing has frozen again so <laughs> great job stream yard right <clears throat> at the perfect time here but i had so much fun hanging with you matt uh, oh you're... yeah likewise thank you so much for having me this totally welcome great. back anytime if you have any thank other you. projects or whatever feel yeah. free to come hang out and if you ever see me do my late night stupid streams uh where i do hangouts and our art you are more than welcome to oh, come cool. and hang yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, we still need to talk about metal and stuff too. So, yes. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. So, this is kind of starting to come up now, but yeah, they're just saying thank you. Dopest fuck. Yeah, thank yes. You. Thank, thank you, you guys for stopping by. Time. You guys are the dopest as fuck chat. Yeah, so. Awesome. So, woo. All right. <laughs> I'm just going to end this now because. Let's go get let's go get something to drink and then <laughs> <laughs> bathroom break or something. <laughs> All right, bye guys. Go head over to Biggie Shack's channel. He's doing his trivia thing, my Bob. So go say hi. See ya. Bye. Thanks for, bye. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're totally welcome. You